I'm Rena Nicole. I pose, I promote, and I'm passionate about our planet. I seek individuals from all over the world who are committed to making a positive impact on the world around them. So the question I have for you is, do you want to make a positive impact on the world around you? Well, do you? Absolutely. Just off Highway 101 on the outskirts of Sonoma County, there is an awesome retreat center with a very interesting man who keeps alive an ancient occupation. So I am here at Isis Oasis in Geyserville, California, where I am interviewing Miguel, the owner and founder of Living Earth Structures. And today we are sitting in one of his structures. And Miguel, could you tell me a little bit about what it is that we have here and, and what is it made of and, and all that? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so this is a cob oven, right? Okay. So cob is a mixture of sand, clay, and straw, and is, uh, has a plaster, a, uh, a lime, sand, clay plaster, and it's sealed with a, a mineral, the mineral spirits and linseed oil and um, you know, color, natural iron oxide pigments. Uh -huh. And uh, so yeah, so this is a, um, a big falcon. Um, it's actually sculpted as Horus. Um, and since we're at Isis Oasis, which is an Egyptian themed retreat center, um, it seemed appropriate to do some kind of an Egyptian themed um, structure. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so that's what I, I do. I, I will take a space, I'll go into somewhere and I'll come up with a design based on kind of the, the energy there and, and kind of the theme of you know, the, the space. And, uh, and so this is kind of our community oven. So we use this when we have uh, different gatherings, uh, potlucks and, uh, you know, parties and dance parties. And we come out here and, and, you know, cook pizzas and veggies and we've done breads and we've done cookies in here and we've done pies and we got some, uh, potatoes. Careful. Ah, and these are, Ooh, these are just about done. Um, <laughs> hot potatoes. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so this is a, an example of a living earth structure, um, and I call it a living earth structure because it's made out of earth, it's alive, mm -hmm. it, it's, you know, it's Gaia, Pachamama, it's a living organism. And, um, you know, I believe that it does have a consciousness. I, I feel that this structure here is actually, has a purpose, it was, it was wanting to be born. Uh -huh. And um, so it's time had come, and so here he is, he's born to, to the world. And, uh, and so you can really tell really how warm it is sitting around it. Yeah, so it is, it's really, nice and it's really nice and warm nice right here. Fireplace. Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit about how you got started making cob structures and, sure. and and the history of cob uh-huh yeah sure thank you um i love talking about cob so this is great um i started doing cob um i guess professionally um back when i uh, out of college mm -hmm. um i uh um was exposed to the cob cottage company they had a, they have a video and and i saw the video and i was like wow and you know, I'd also grown up in Petaluma, so, and, and so I was exposed to adobe structures at a okay. very early age, uh -huh. and did a you know project when I was young, and you know, so I was you know exposed to it, and uh, you know, and I had a, um, I grew up doing tile work also, and so I was very oh. familiar working with mud, you know, cement and sand and clay, and, and putting up under the walls, and I think that gave me an advantage at a very early age also. Um, and uh, and so, but once I was exposed to the the concept, you know, the philosophy, the practice of cob building, it resonated instantly. Mm -hmm. I just knew, like, this is it. This is so it. Like, uh -huh. oh my gosh! Like, wow, you can build a house for like five hundred dollars? You totally can. Ooh. Yeah. And wow. you can get your friends together, and everyone that can all help build your house. Like, how amazing would that be? And, you know, the houses can be all round and curved and comfortable and warm and, and uh, rounded. You can feel like you're living inside of a hug. And, you know, it's just, and the, you can do so many creative um, things with it. And it just seemed like this is so it. Like the whole concept of going to the store, buying cement, 
that whose production is responsible for about a sixth of the pollution in the atmosphere. Right. Yeah. And, and the wood. Uh, and the wood. I mean, just chopping down our beautiful trees and for your houses. Like, come on, stop. Like, we don't need to do that. I really think that we're intended to use this earth uh-huh. as our livable structures. I, I really think that us as humans are intended to, to build with the earth. And, and so um, there's so many reasons why we should do it. It just, it just makes sense mm-hmm. on, on so many levels. And just... Um, you know, the fact that it builds community, that it's healthy for the body, uh, you know, that it's good for the environment, that is beautiful, that is long lasting. I mean, there's earth structures that have survived for thousands of years. Yeah. You know? Big ones, too. 18 story earthen structures in like the Middle East. Enormous. And um, so the so, history of Cobb yeah. goes back that far, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. Adobe, earth, earth brick. Yeah, for really? sure. Way wow. back, way back. So yeah. the word cob. Was... Well, the word cob, actually, it's an old English word, right? Uh-huh. So the word cob actually means a rounded lump of mass. So in um, England, they were building cob houses 600 years ago, and they're still being lived in. Yeah. Like, and these cob houses have walls like that thick. And so the word and cob they, means they a rounded not... lump of mass. So they would just, there'd be people making uh-huh. the cob in the ground. They'd take those cob balls and they'd throw them up to the people working on the, the walls. And they'd push the cob in place with their fingers. And, you know, the cob would have lots of straw in it. And that helps to hold it all together. It's uh-huh. kind of like the natural rebar, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and so then it just dries in the sun and then it's plastered and sealed. Well, in England, they would put a lime wash on it every couple of years. They'd put a lime wash to protect it from the rain. So these 600 structures, they're not, like, falling down in any way? They're so, no. still Really? So being lived in. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. yeah. So maintenance is key, though, uh-huh. as far as, and like, how many wood structures so can we say that are yeah, lasting that long? Right, yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. with all the fires that happen and uh-huh. lots of and things. And as far like, as ovens go, yeah. the longer it gets used, the more it gets used, the stronger it gets. Huh. So mm-hmm. this is going to be here for forever. I mean, there, there's nothing that's going to cause this thing to collapse other than a I big can't mallet. think of anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess if somebody, <laughs> a big, a big ball construction ball came and smash it, okay. But, but other than uh, that, you know. it would stay for 600 yeah. years. Uh-huh. This will be here for about 600 years. Uh huh. So. Uh huh. Yeah. For. It'll be lo- here a lot longer than but, we are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece, and it's so nice and warm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's like, it is like a big hug. Uh-huh. Like, you just, you do just want to, like, it's hugging you, and you just want to hug it, <laughs> you know? Earlier, we made some gifts for friends and family of yours right. uh-huh. made of cob. So, yeah. what is it, what is it that we did? All right. So, besides doing big structures i can also do small little cob structures which is really nice to be able to bring a cob structure into your house and have Mm -hmm. a cob on your wall and and so what we did was um i was making some candle holders kind of thing out of cob and so what we did is first we got i got some boards you know some pieces of plywood cut it in kind of an oval shape right and then got some aviary wire and stapled that onto the board and then, uh, and then we took our cob mix uh, that we s- danced in together. Yes, and that was And we fun. got some clay from the duck pond and just scooped up the clay and we got that clay and then we mixed it in with some sand, uh, added a little bit of uh, dry powdered clay also, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then we mixed it up and then we just took that cob mix and uh, put it on the board and then put uh, abalone shell, uh, we put a mirror, um, I'm going to put some stained glass in there and kind of pressed it in and then put the cob around it. So it's basically a cob frame, like picture right, frame. Yeah. And then uh, we've put a little space there for a candle. And uh, so, yeah, and there's little hooks on the back so it can be uh, a hanging for, you know, for a wall hanging. And so it'll dry in a few days um, and then I'll plaster it and then I'll put some sealer on it. And I'll, I like to put little mica, little gold mica into the uh-huh. mix. So, yeah. Create a little bit of shine. Uh-huh. Right. A little, yeah, a little glitter. Uh-huh. Nice. And uh, so, yeah, so that's a, it's a great little activity that you can do with a group of kids. Um, and, uh, you know, if you have a small budget and, um, 
you know, because it only takes a few minutes to make. It's very easy and it doesn't yeah. really cost anything at all. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you had talked about working with kids and, and Cobb mm -hmm. as uh, Living Earth Structures. Do you do workshops with people? Yeah. Yeah, I, I do about five workshops a year. Um, I've done three workshops here, and I've done a couple other ones in various different places. And um, so that's a, a great way to do a project, for mm -hmm. sure, is because it's a win-win situation for everybody. Um, you know, because people can, you know, learn how to do it, and, um, you know, I get the help, which is great. I was able to build this in just, a, you know, a couple days because I had all these people, you know, helping out. And... Um, and so, so yeah, workshops are great. Doing natural building in schools too is like so important, I feel. I feel like now is the time that we can really bring natural building into school curriculum. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's really what I'm, that's a big focus of my work is, uh, is getting uh, schools to use it. Because it, it can be incorporated into so many different curriculum. It can be incorporated into history curriculum when they're teaching about Mesopotamia and early civilizations, uh, you know, building with mud brick. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be incorporated into life sciences, uh, earth sciences, um, you know, biology, mathematics. You're know, talking about the ratios, you know. Um, and of the different ingredients. Uh, uh, yeah, and that kind you of know, thing. yeah, sure. exactly. And, uh -huh. um, How to make slip versus. Mm -hmm. uh, of a cob like the mix. Cob, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, Spanish class, because so much of natural building is kind of is very indigenous you know, to Latino you know, cultures. Right, yeah. Um, PE, I mean, it's very physically, you know, yeah. kind of, uh, demanding at times. And, um, you know, nutrition, I mean, it's just healthy for the body, you know. I mean, there's actually some nutritionalists that talk about, they say that it's more important being barefoot, grounded to the earth, mm -hmm. than even what kind of food we eat. Because really? you're because you're getting all those electrolytes from, from the earth because the earth has is negatively charged so it has dis uh, electrons yeah. that makes sense because we've uh -huh. been so disconnected so it's like directly for so long. to the yeah. source uh huh, huh? yeah 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 and even nutritionists that are making a lot of money selling superfoods are saying you know what guys actually it's just take off your shoes take your shoes off yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it just keep it simple huh. yeah so. Um, yeah, so I, I definitely think that in the future, natural building, cob building, we'll come adobe back. building is so going to come back. Yeah. It's going to be such a part of mainstream society. Everybody's going to know that it's possible. Oh, if they want an oven in their backyard, they can just go dig a hole in the ground, get yeah. some sand, mix it up with their feet, build an oven. If they don't want, if they don't have access to gas or electricity, so what? They can still, you know, use, you know cook in their oven. So what do you think got us to a place where we stopped using cob? It's a lot of work. One, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of work. And two, cement is so easy. Mm -hmm. Cement is, you know, just, and um, cement and, and constructions, you know, once unions come in uh, and they build the structure, I mean, it's like right now you can't build a cob house legally. Really? You can't. You, you just can't. Huh. There's all sorts of permits that prevent mm -hmm. you from building a cob house. Right. It, there's no code for it. They haven't done the tests that are necessary to... Well, can't they just know. go over to London and say, oh, yeah, this structure's been here for 600 years. I think it's okay. They should, but every county has their own regulations and everything. Hmm. And to get a permit, you know, it didn't cost a lot of money and everything. Yeah. So the tests just haven't been done to that prove that just how long cob can last for. Yeah. It needs to happen, and it's going to happen. You know, cob needs to be put on a shake table to simulate an earthquake. It needs to be subjected to fires, water, you know, all the different tests, that so they can see, oh, my gosh, this material is amazing. Like, w yeah, we need to be using this. Um, but also, it's just, um, you know, to make adobe bricks, um, you know, it's, it's usually handmade. Um, whereas, you know, cinder blocks, it's just made in a factory. It's so quick, mm -hmm. so quick. Um, I mean, you can get uh, machines that ma make bricks, um, but it's just, it's not really, um, it costs a lot of money. Yeah. and It takes the heart out of it, the human part yeah, out of oh, it. Yeah, oh, for sure, for yeah. sure, yeah. So what are the reasons why people should be using cob? Wow, great. I love that question. Why? Um, well, because I actually have a book here, um, the book Living Earth Structures. Huh? I was thinking of calling it Accomplishments. 
<laughs> I speak Cobb, by the way. I uh huh. And uh, and so in this book, I have the um, the 50, 50 reasons of why it's good to do Cobb. Oh, look at that! Right, just like that. <laughs> so uh, number one, most importantly, it's fun. Yeah, and that, that's it was. why I do. It's fun. I, it why was do I do fun. it? Because it's fun. Um, you know, you can look at any one of these, and I can talk about it for a long time. Um, you know, and uh, you know, so. Yeah, so there's lots and lots and lots of reasons of why it's good to do Cobb. Um, it gives people a sense of accomplishment to build something for themselves. Um, at Cobb, um, you can make Cobb ovens to build things. It brings out your inner child while working with it. Um, its design can be rounded, smooth, and soft. And it, um, it gives, uh, you know, it's personally empowering. Um, you know, kind of creates a new social structure where we have to kind of depend on each other and mm -hmm. things, you know, and, and, and um, you know, I think most importantly with, with kids, it gets kids outside and gets them away from their computers and their video games right. and yeah. away from all their technology and cement and, yeah. and, um, and just gets them out and just like connected with the earth again and yeah. just get their feet in the earth again and to work in a team again and to have a feeling of like, hey, look what I helped build yeah. and go home and tell their parents, hey, look, mom, dad, look what I helped build and I know how to build something now. Let's build. I can show you how to build an oven or a bench in our backyard. Yeah. You know, I learned how to do this at school. You just need some earth. You get to get some sand, mix it up with your feet. You sculpt on it and you sculpt it and you can make whatever you want. You know, and it, it's possible one day that this is actually going to be a necessity. I mean, that, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. We just don't right. know. Yeah. But, but if this, the is, this is a way is to you. be prepared. Sorry. Uh -huh. Yeah. If the future was written by you... How would you like? How would you love to see this 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 future that you hope to see? Cities are abandoned. Everybody moves out of the city. Well, then what would happen to the city? It's just the structures. Just leave it there. <laughs> okay. Just leave it there. Okay. Leave it there. They they just burn so much energy. It's so hard to incorporate any permaculture principles in a city. Yeah. That's it's true. so hard. Yeah. So get out of the city. There is so much land. We have so there's so much land. Use it, just build up from scratch. Mm -hmm. Go find land where there's a water source nearby, and uh, and just build from the earth and, and apply everything, all the principles, all the permaculture principles from scratch. Now the permaculture start, principles start, are what? Permaculture principles are you know organic gardening, mm -hmm. uh, composting. Um, certainly natural building, utilizing water efficiently, uh, utilizing sunlight mm -hmm. efficiently, um, uh, utilizing wind power, you know, working with all elements and, uh, and, you know, certainly building our structure from the earth that are energy efficient, that, that heat up from the sun, that have rocket stoves, like these really efficient stoves inside for, for heating, um, being able to walk everywhere, you're not needing to get in the car and go driving all over the place, right, yeah. but being able to just like work near where you're living and, you know, very community based and just getting, getting it back to basics. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And, um, I mean, that's, and it's not going to happen unless there's some huge disaster. It's just, it's, no one's going to do that because it's, it's going to be a lot of work to get it to that level. Right. It's going to be a lot of work. And, you know, we're, we're not really proactive. We're, we're reactive. And right. so that's, that's not going to happen. But it's, um, but it might, if enough people wake up and enough, you build enough cob structures, maybe. Hopefully, hopefully I'll see it in my lifetime. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully. Because, you know, I'm not afraid of a system collapse. I'm, like, looking forward to it. I'm like, bring it on. Collapse, <laughs> system. Let it fall. Like, I'll be busy. <laughs> you know? Uh, you know? So, uh, yeah. So, whatever happens, whatever happens, I, I think, you know, Cobb, will, with, without a doubt, will continue to thrive. So, when I first got here, you had a few chores that you had to do. And one of them was feeding the birds. Right, right. Yeah, well, uh, being a staff here at Isis Oasis, kind of the exchange is I do work hours, you know, uh -huh. so I, I have a certain amount of hours I put in, you mm -hmm. know, per week. 
And so one of my tasks is to feed the birds. So this is a bird, animal, cat sanctuary. Uh -huh. And uh, so we have all sorts of exotic birds. Um, we have parrots and cockatoos and, and uh, peacocks and emus and cranes and swans and pheasants and all sorts of really beautiful birds. You have and a favorite? So, uh, my favorite uh, would actually have to be the, the swans, the swans in the pond. Uh huh. The swans in the pond. And why um, would that be? Well, they're very social. The, whenever I go up to them, they always like, quack, 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 quack. They're very social. Uh huh. So, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, they're very friendly. And also, of course, they, um, I, I, they, they're, a male swan is actually called a cob, right? <laughs> so, of, of course, I have a special affinity well, to yes, an animal called a cob. Sense. I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm sure if we had short legged horses, you know, those would be my favorite animal too, because they're my, you know, that's also a cob. Oh, really? Yeah. Any other um, cob? Well, the spiders. We have some spiders in the vivarium. Another word for a spider is a cob, also. You know, a cob web, right? So, yeah, right. right, okay, yeah. that makes sense. Um, You're a cobber. Yeah, so uh, I'm a cobber. Yeah. Cobber. Uh, uh -huh. So yeah, so feeding the birds is great. So another thing that I do on the property as kind of my exchange, the way I contribute to the property, is I build these structures. So I built this. Uh, I built a, a sauna um, that has the Hecate, um, you know, frog on top of it. Uh -huh. uh, Hecate is actually the, the midwife um, who birthed uh, Horus. Right, oh. in Egyptian cosmology, right? Uh -huh. And then on the other side of the property, I have a pyramid oven, and I have a sphinx in the garden uh, by the labyrinth uh, that I built a couple years ago. And I also have a mobile mud hut. I call it a caboose. <laughs> uh, it's made out of cob and bamboo, so cabu, caboose. Uh -huh. And uh, so I take that, on, I drive on the back of my truck and take it to festivals and, and things. And so... Uh, yeah, so I and I have a, a, a bench over there too around the fire pit that I built, uh -huh. and uh, that's used a lot for you know people drumming around and singing songs oh, nice. and things. So, yeah, I, I've definitely been enjoying living here, and uh, I, I'm sure I'll be building a lot more structures. Well, I'm looking forward to yeah. seeing those. Uh -huh. That'll be awesome <laughs> yeah. to see all the the things that you're creating here. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. It's been really wonderful speaking with you. Thank and you. Sharing with me all of the wonderful things that you do and your philosophy of life and earth and and making an impact in your own special way. Uh-huh. And now, yes. have you been cobverted? I have. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm a cobvert. She's a cobvert. <laughs> <laughs> Miguel was kind enough to demonstrate the sheer awesomeness of his cob oven by making my crew and me some homemade pizzas. Take a look at that. Yum! Push that back. Okay, so now we're going to be putting our pizza here into... Orno. The very ancient practice that people have been doing for thousands of years. How long do they take to cook? Um, it takes, uh, you'll see, it takes just a few minutes to cook. I mean, the oven is probably um, 800 degrees or so. Ooh, Holy, I mean, you stick your hand in there? <laughs> well, it's probably, yeah, it's, it's hot. It's definitely hot. Oh, yeah, melting pizza. Oh, my goodness. So how did you make the oven? So the oven was made, um, first the, I insulated the floor with, uh, with bottles, like uh, wine bottles and beer bottles, and I got perlite. So all of this, about, about eight inches of insulation, and then I put the, uh, the brick down on top of that, and that's so that's the, the brick stays hot for a long time. Oh. And then, uh, and then I, I made a, a pile of sand. Uh oh. Did you burn the pizza? The, the, bottom, the bottom of the pizza, the bottom of the brick is really hot. Uh-huh. So, um, so it does the... Um, the best thing to do is to wait about five minutes before putting the pizza in. And I didn't do that. I kind of got excited and pushed the, the coals to the back and put the pizza in right away. Oh. So it's good because the brick gets really, really hot. And oh, so if okay. I put the, the, uh, the pizza on, 
um, before letting the bricks cool off a little bit, uh -huh. then sometimes the, the bottom one, uh, the, the, the oh, bottom of the pizza the gets burned. So that I think that's kind of what happened. So I, I pulled okay. this forward just a little bit so that um, to let it cool off, let the bricks cool off. Right. And uh, and, and the front, this, this part isn't quite as hot. So it'll still be, it'll still be cooking, um, you know, up front. So anyhow, so then I made a pile of sand, right? Made a pile of sand and I uh -huh. put the sand clay straw mix, the cob mix, over that, over the sand, right? And then I took the sand out. Oh, yeah. okay. So you used it kind of as a, um, a mold. Like a positive mold. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. This vegetarian one looks Thank so, you so good. Much. Yeah. That's the door, right? Yeah, this is the door. I think I'm just going <laughs> to contain the heat just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, that's really cool. Yeah. So, the, so what do you have here? Okay, so this is the wheat-free uh, vegetarian pizza, Primo, <laughs> and uh, it's got some pesto and it's got some spinach oh, and uh, wow. all sorts of veggies on there. Awesome. Um, and this one here is a uh, wheat with a little bit of meat for you know the other side and. Um, <laughs> And so, yeah, I mean, as you saw, this cooked in less than five minutes. And, wow. um, yeah, so, you know, it's great. And so, so, you know, the oven whole concept is like, you know, being able to eat food outdoors, not inside. Yeah. So it's all kind of part of nature. And, and uh, the sun came out, so we have a nice, beautiful day. Yeah. And uh, at nighttime, when it gets cold out, we can have a fire going and sit around the, the fire. So it kind of works as a fireplace, too. And so, I'm gonna uh, dig eat. in here. Yeah. I'm just gonna Please grab do. this lovely, beautiful piece and cheers. 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 Mm. Mm -hmm. That's really good. <laughs> If you would like to learn how to bring cob into your home and become a cobvert like me, please visit Miguel at livingearthstructures.com. What is this thing sticking out of his head? This one. Oh, okay. For more of The Rena Nicole Show, go to www.renanicoleshow.com. This was a Renaissance Woman production.